ready hello student good morning this is the first class of this academic session 2020-21 today class 12 geography i will discuss so before the starting of this chapter first i will discuss about your syllabus so you know that regarding the last year also have the same there have the two theory book and one practical book in this year also have same i think you have got this book one is human geography one is india people and social so today i will discuss the chapter second chapter from human geography and also the first chapter of india people and social these two chapter have similarity because these two chapter related with population so before the starting of the chapter first population you know you have heard this term you have read this in previous classes so this is population so what is population first i will explain the population is the living things in a particular area it may be plant population maybe animal population or maybe human population so in this year in geography you will read about human population all over the world as well as another book all over india so some basic concept the basic information about population this is the you know all over the world population have distributed unevenly i think you know because there are several reason i will explain this reason je why population distributed unevenly and before that first pattern of population distribution in the world the pattern of population distribution in the world that means if you will seen all over the world population have distributed unevenly suppose if all over the world 90% population only lived 10% land area the so 90% population live in only 10% of the land surface that means rest of the 90% are remain vacant not vacant only 10% for people scattered on that area but the maximum number of people live only 10% of the land area and also all over the world 10 most populous 10 most populous country have our country india also the second largest in your book have the bar diagram in the first page of human geography you will see that the china is the leading position all over the world in a leading for this position means most populous country all over the world and india is the second then usa indonesia brazil pakistan or rest of the country also have but you know according to the size india is the seventh largest country according to the area india is seventh largest but according to the population india is second largest populous country all over the world and most interesting is that among this 10 populous country six countries in asia so all over the world there are seven continent and among them asia is the most populous continent all over the world now you will read the density of population the first density of population so density of population we will explain the so suppose there are two same size of place if we can try to explain it that if you see this picture you can understand about the population density because if you compare this two area suppose this areas is the same the area is same in this two place a and b if you compared the number of population in these two area are not same this areas population density is less 
rather than the place of B. Hello, what is population density? The definition is also very important and also having formula. The population density means the number of population, the number of people living per unit area, per unit area, each sub may be per one square kilometer. The per one square kilometer area, how many number of people live? It is called population density and also have one formula. Total number of population divided by area. This is the formula of population density. So, the population density, suppose I will give an example that there have 1 lakh 50,000 population divided by 100 square kilometer area. Then, the 1500 people per person per square kilometer. It is the population density formula. The number of people live per unit area such as per square kilometer, it is called population density. When I will discuss in Indian geography, Indian population, it, there have also the same con topic density of population in India. So, all over the world, in your book have the page number 9, there have a map, world map. And in this map, you will see the distribution of population and density of population in different countries. Now, you will see all over the world, Asia is the most populous country, I have told already. And density wise, if you will compare that Asian country, some Asian country also have, the population density is very high. So, what is population density? I think you can understand. The number of people live per unit area such as per square kilometer. It is population density. Now, one important question in your book, also this is important question for your board exam also. Je, what are the reasons, what are the factors affecti affecting the uneven distribution of population? Factors affecting by influencing uneven distribution of population. This question now I will explain. So generally there are three factors. First one geographical factor factor second economic factor and third so social and cultural factor so this is the basic three part geographical factor economic factor and social and cultural factor and each and every factors have another some sub point. So the first of one geographical factor. Geographical factor the first one is the geographical factor means the factor is also related with the natural resources. But nature this factor are physical factor like that. The geographical factor the first one is availability of water. Availability of water. The availability of water means, you know, water is the basic needs in our life. So, from the beginning, from the beginning, people try to live on that areas where water is available. Water means they are fresh water. You know, what is the importance of water? I think each and every student can understand how water is important in our life. So, like water first. What are the factors? The factors, geographical factor, water. The water means those areas have available fresh water. Suppose if in your history you have read some chapter also have this early civilization. The early civilization period you have seen till so many civilization have formed on the bank of the river. So why some this type of civilization developed on the bank of the river? 
what are the reason the main reason is on the base of water this water have used for the different purpose like water help for drinking purpose water also used for production of crops as well as this water also they use for another their uh, family needs or any other work so these are the important factor on that time and now also the same the water is also very important and based on fresh water people try to live in their surrounding places and nowadays if our country you have seen the bank of the river ganga so many important cities was developed and till now this city was is present like kolkata like lucknow like patna banaras so all these cities develop on the bank of the river because this water used for different purpose industrialization industrial work they use water for agriculture work they use for this work of some domestic work like that so water is most important and that's why on the base of water people try to live some places and second point this is the land form <coughs> if someone have visit or have gone any mountain region i think they have noticed that this region peop, number of people are very less so generally landform means there are three type of landform mountain plain and plateau so this is the three type of landform and among these three type of landform we feel always prefer i think you know this is the plain land this is the plain land but obviously people try to live in some very few people live in mountain and plateau but maximum people try to live in the plain land why because plain land have lots of opportunity lots of scope rather than mountain and plateau so from the beginning people try to live on that flat surface flat surface that means plain land also help for doing agricultural work plain land also help for doing uh, different type of industrial work set up building roads bridge that's why people prefer to live in this plain land rather than mountain and plateau mountain region and plateau region also have different type of resources people also live on that places but not more people maximum people live in plain land so this is the from the beginning and in our country you have seen the plain land not than plain having a physical features of our country you know that and this physical not than plain so many state are there uttar pradesh bihar west bengal assam this is the state where maximum people live in that plain land so that's why land form is also a important factor so mountain and plain region mountain and plateau region population is less rather than plain land so this factor is also including in land form now another one this is the climate it is also a important geographical factor acha student student listen if having any queries you can call me this number also have given in this uh, screen i think so climate it is also another important factor so what is climate i think you know climate weather and climate are the two related term so some atmospheric condition which is present in a particular area for a long period of time it is called climate and weather weather can change day to day hour to hour it will change but climate it will remain same in a long period of time in a particular area so this is climate the so climate is also an important factor and people always prefer to live in a moderate climatic region moderate climatic region means this region it should be not very hot or not very cold the harsh climatic condition people avoid that's why if you will see in all over the world you know the polar region or equatorial region the temperature is very high in equatorial region and temperature is very cold in polar region but people try to live on that areas where temperature moderate amount of rainfall is also sufficient not very high or not very low the climatic condition is also important factor and those areas having pleasant climate like mediterranean region 
Mediterranean region in in Mediterranean Sea, you know, in between Europe and Africa, this is the Mediterranean Sea, and their surrounding areas have the pleasant climate, and this region also held for doing agricultural work. So that's why people try to live in the climatic region where the pleasant climate or moderate climate is present. Like polar region or desert region or dense forest, heavy rainfall region, these places are not favorable for human survival. That's why people prefer to live in the moderate climatic condition areas. And the next point, the last point of geographical factor, this is soil. The landform and soil are not same. Landform means the shape of the land. But soil, the part of land, the thinnest part of the land is soil. The soil is also very helpful because, you know, crops grown in the soil. The soil fertility is the most important for human population distribution factor. You know, people always defend from the beginning, people try to uh, doing some agricultural work. Now, you know that the agricultural work have done only the fertile soil. So, all over the world, those region have river, those region have fertile soil, people try to live on that particular area rather than less fertile soil. So, you know, mountain region or desert region, soil are not fertile. But some plain land, obviously they are having a fertile soil. That's why people prefer to live on that particular area. I think this four point you can understand. Uh, also, I will repeat it later on. Then the next one, this is the economic factor. Student have any query, you can call me. This number also have given in your screen. This is the economic factor. The economic factor, there are generally three factors are there, have in your book. You have read, you read it. This is the mineral, then urbanization, then industrialization. So, minerals on the base of mineral. So, on the basis of mineral means I think you can understand the economic factor means money related. People try to live on that place for having great scope for earning money. That's why all over the world, if you will see, those areas have mining place. That means lots of mining mine center are there. People try to live on their surrounding areas because so many people can doing their work in their mining area. That's why minerals is also very important. Suppose you know that minerals are found generally in Plateau region. The Plateau region from the landform point of view, the Plateau region is not favorable. But if having any valuable mineral on that areas, people prefer to live on that place. So that's why the mineral areas with mineral deposit attract industries and also based on mineral, so many industry can set up their surrounding places. <coughs> so industrialization also I will ex <coughs> explain later. The first one, mineral I think you can understand that from the on the basis of mineral people also can earn more money. So that's why people try to leave those region have availability of minerals. And next point is urbanization. Nowadays it is the trend all over the world. The people try to move from rural to urban places. Urban areas are extended day by day. What are the reason? I think you can understand. The urbanization means the urban places have lots of scope, great opportunity. All the facilities are available. That's why people try to shift it from rural to urban places. And as a result, the urban area are increasing day by day. So why urban areas are increasing? Because people try to live on that urban center. The urbanization is also an um, important factor for the uneven distribution of population. Because people can earn more money, people also have the great opportunity in the urban places. That's why they left the rural region and shifted to the urban region. And industrialization, industrialization means growing of industry. The growing of industry, the industry also depends on minerals. Not only minerals, also another factor also have. So, main the basic raw material is mineral in industry. The industrialization also uh, helps for the people's survival on a particular area. If having any industry in your surrounding, in your locality, you know, Durapur is the industrial town. Because there are so many industries and maximum people engage 
with that industries that's why industrialization also an important factor for the uneven distribution of population so and the last one it is a social and cultural factor i will explain you will listen this the social and cultural factor means people always prefer in that place where they are having the great opportunity as well as social and cultural peace are there if having any social disturbance people try to avoid social or political disturbance people are not prefer that's why and that's why people live on that areas and the cultural factor cultural factor means the religion religious purpose you know you have seen so many uh, city or so many uh, places have people attracted by the religion so religious purpose when people shifted or lived in a particular area it is also a cultural significance so this total portion is a important question and also it is very easy if you listen you can understand there are three factor geographical factor economic factor social and cultural factor and in geographical factor water is the main most important first availability of water then availability of landform availability of climate and availability of soil i think you can understand this one second factor economic factor this economic factor means availability of minerals urbanization and industrialization after that social and cultural factor the so, social and cultural factor means people try to live on that areas when those region attracted by their from their religious background so, this region people try to live so, this is the in, important information now the next topic next topic is population growth next topic is population growth the population growth what is population growth first growth means growth means increasing the number of pe people population growth means population increase or population decrease the population growth first you will prepare the difference the definition what is population growth population growth means the difference between the change of population in a particular area in between two point of time the change of population in a particular area india in between two point of time 2001 to 2011 it is called population growth the population growth definition also have in your book you will read it that the change of population in a particular area in between two point of time suppose and it is just subtraction in between the uh, two two year 2001 number of population minus 2011 number of population you can get the population growth then population growth rate what is population growth rate population growth rate means when this population growth will express in percentage so when you will we will explain the population growth in percentage it is called population growth rate the so population growth and population growth rate is very simple now another one natural growth rate natural growth rate very simple difference between birth and death the difference between birth and death it is called natural growth rate the natural growth rate we can calculate using this formula difference between birth and death but another one is very important actual growth rate what is this the birth minus death plus in migration what is migration i will discuss later minus out migration it is the actual growth rate the difference between birth and death plus in migration minus out migration so when you will get the data you will put it and you can get actual growth of population 
by actual growth of population. Then positive growth of population. What is positive growth of population? This is happen when the birth rate is more than the death rate in between two point of time. So the birth rate and death rate. Suppose two thousand one year place A. The population is 1500 okay and during that one year 2002 in that same particular place the newborn baby is born 1500 plus 30 and also so this is the birth and death number is 20 the so natural growth rate you can easily find out the difference between birth minus death the so birth minus death 30 minus 20 10 the population is 100 1500 plus 10 total population is 100 5010 so this is the positive growth rate because the birth rate is more birth rate is more than death rate it is called positive growth rate the positive growth rate happens when in between a two point of time two point of time in 2001 to 2002 the birth rate is more than death rate it is called positive growth rate then another one this is the negative growth rate the opposite population 2001 there was 1500 suppose birth is 20 death is 40 then The new one baby is born twenty, and death forty. The total number of population after the one year. What will the number? The number is four eight zero. How? Because the difference between birth and death. Difference between birth and death. If you will see, there are minus twenty, and previous population is one thousand five hundred minus twenty. So in that situation, you have seen. the population decreases from 1500 to 1480 it is called negative growth of population so this is the very important short question in that box that what is population growth what is natural growth what is growth rate and what is the formula of actual growth rate actual growth it is the difference between birth and death plus difference between in migration and out migration then what is the positive growth of population and what is the negative growth of population so this is the information you will get from that topic now the next topic is component of population change and change there are generally there are two this is important that component of population change this is that there are three generally birth death and migration these are the three main part that this is the birth death and migration these are the three part of population component of population change birth i think you know that My death also you know that and migration i will explain later so in this topic some person have the crude birth rate they are having a formula crude birth rate crude birth rate means it is the formula of b1 by phi into 
here b1 means b1 means birth during the year number of birth then p means this is b1 total number of population this is p into 1000 so this is the crude birth rate of a particular place say bi by phi into 1000 and similarly also one thing also have it is called it is also called cbr cbr other one is crude death rate it is called C D R. They are also having the same type of formula. It is D by P into thousand. Let D means number of death. P means total number of population and the D by P into thousand uh, this is the important the what is cbr what is cdr in your book also have this formula you will follow it i think you can understand now the another important topic in this chapter this is migration First, what is migration? You have heard this term migration. The migration means when people shift from one place to another place, it is called migration. When people shifted from one place to another place, it is called migration. Suppose a person move from place A to place B, it is called migration. They so, shifted from one place to another place. So, apart from birth and death, migration is also another component of population change due to the migration number of population also will be changed in a particular place then different information also have regarding migration the first one is two term have place of origin and place of destination place of origin this one is place for place of sorry destination so place of origin and place of destination these are the two term have in migration so what is place of origin place of origin are this place from where people left so place of origin means where people live then people shifted from that place it is place of origin and place of destination means from one place people go to the another place the new place is at the place of destination so where people move this is called suppose in this picture place a is the place of origin and place b is the place of destination the place a and place b the place of origin and place of destination and also another two term also have one is immigration and immigration the so migration are generally two part immigration and emigration the so immigration means immigration and emigration is quite confusing but if you will follow this instruction you can remind easily just you will remind this first alphabet i and e so i means I stand for, we will consider in, E stand for exit. So when you remind this, you can also easily recall these two terms, immigration and immigration. So immigration means, first immigration, immigration means people live 
from that place it is called emigration people leave from that place suppose place a here emigration is place a because people people uh, lived from place a tell this is called emigration exit and when people lived or people reach on the new place place of destination this is the immigration means in migration tell in actual growth of population i have written the difference between birth minus death plus in migration minus out migration so in migration means immigration out migration means immigration so in migration and out migration these are the two important term in migration and out migration so in migration stand for in a new place place of destination and out migration means immigration place of where people lived this is the place of immigration tell immigration and immigration i think you can understand now another important part also have this is migration have done generally two factors are very important two factor one is push factor another one is pull factor So the push factor and pull factor, the difference also you will prepare in your home. Very easy. So the push factor are generally this factor applicable at this place from where people left. So the push factor have done place of origin. So many reason, different type of lacking, lack of education, health. transport basic needs opportunity it is for so this all are this type of opportunity are have lacking in that place this is called their push factor are applicable the for that reason people push from that place and pull factor there have all these type of facilities are available availability of this opportunity this suppose person a person x he or she move from rural to urban the so person x move from rural to urban all these push factor are applicable here all these push factor applicable here that's why people left this place and people reach in that areas urban their pull factor means attract people that's why push factor and pull factor have very important understand now after that some important uh, information also have in this chapter this is doubling of time of world population world population have increases day by day and population doubling means population number increases it is population doubling in time doubling means the population double suppose 1 billion population in a year after few years later it will reach in a 2 billion population this is the population doubling in time okay so the in this chapter the last topic it is the demographic transition model today i will discuss this topic demographic transition model and then i will also discuss in your social and social and india's people and social this chapter this book in the first chapter population in india so demographic transition model the demographic transition model a graphical representation by this graph we can understand 
India's the country's position. Country's position means there are three stage. It is the stage one. It is the stage two. It is the stage three. The stage one, stage two, and stage three, and they are having a vertical scale. It is the birth rate and death rate. Birth and death. So there are three stages: first stage, second stage, and third stage. All over the world, each and every country are situated in one stage. So those country situated in the first stage. the characteristics of first stage is birth rate and death rate is high so in that stage birth rate and death rate remain high this is the first stage what are the reason the main reason is lack of education lack of education then health these are the main reason that's why birth rate and death rate are very high and this is under developed country economically under developed This is the first stage. All over the world, so many countries are their economic condition are not developed, underdeveloped country. These underdeveloped countries are situated here, and in that stage, population number will not increase rapidly because birth rate and death rate are very high. When you will see in the second stage, the second stage birth rate. still remain high but death rate decreasing the birth rate and birth rate still remain high the second stage characteristics is birth rate is high death rate low why improvement of health facility health facility but education facility have not developed lack of education still present that's why in the stage population exploitation occurred sen increase rapidly in the stage population increase rapidly this is the second stage india is also situated in that the last part of second stage and the third stage birth rate and death rate both are low birth rate low death rate low improvement of health facility improvement of education facility population growth decline economically clearly economically developed so this is the demographic transition model and there are three stage each and every stage their birth rate and death rate are different so this is also important question and in your book have this diagram or graph you can use it when you will write the answer and the last portion population control measure government have taken so many initiative because nowadays we can realize 
if the number of population increases rapidly, lots of problems have arise in our society. Due to that increasing of the population, first main problem is the lots of resources are destroyed and the food security are the main important problem if number of population increases. So, what are the impact of population increases? I think in the next chapter also I will discuss and this is the um, world population and birth um, population control government have taken so many initiative step like family planning program, government also providing opportunities those are economically backward. So, these are the different different step have taken by government to control the population all over the world as an individual different different countries. Now, student see in your social and India social and people this chapter this book the first chapter is population it is India's population I have told from the beginning the in this year you will read Indian socio-economic geography as well as world socio-economic geography. So, the population also have the both two book and also have the similarity, have the similarity. The population same distribution density and growth India. The distribution have the same factor I have told. Je in this factor you can also write in purpose of Indian population distribution. The Indian population distribution have the same. The distribute population are distributed unevenly all over the country. And before of that uh, starting of this chapter one term also very important it is census. What is census? Census is an official enumeration of population done periodically. The census and official enumeration of population done periodically. That means, in a particular period of time, government disclose the population data. This census have started first. 1872, but in this year 1872, there have some problem or uh, having some dispute. That is why successful fully 1881 year first census have done in India. First census, successful first census have done from 1881 every 10 years gap. The last census have done in India 2011 and next again government disclosed the population data in 2021. So, this population census is very important and official enumeration of population done periodically. The first census have started from 1881 since last 2020, 2011 have done and the next one will be published in 2021. And also another topic have in this chapter, I have already disclosed or explained this, it is the population density in India. Well, if you will see in a state wise population density, the formula are the same, total number of population divided by area, the so, population density are the same formula. If in a state wise you will see, in a state wise there are also difference. All over the world, India, you know Uttar Pradesh is the most popular state, most popular state. Uttar Pradesh, but according to the population density, the most popu most population density is Bihar. According to the last census, one thousand one hundred zero two person per square kilometer. West Bengal also have one thousand twenty nine person per square kilometer. It is the population density of West Bengal according to the census two thousand eleven. If all over the India you will see that some state population density is high and also there have a similarity. The state like West Bengal, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, on that Kerala, Maharashtra and Assam, this state have the population density density is very high. The main reason is the river or supplying water and fertile soil. 
and transport and communication system. All these are the important factor that is why population of the particular area is very high. Now another one some two term also have one is physiological density and agricultural density. This is the information as a MCQ it will come you know in your syllabus so many MCQ question will come so that is why MCQ physiological density. density physiological density and another one is agricultural density the physiological density and agricultural density these are the most important and also what is physiological density and what is agricultural density now I will discuss the total population by net cultivated area total population divided by net cultivated area this is the formula of this is the formula of physiological density this is the formula of physiological density and agricultural density is total agricultural population total agd cultural population now one question you will arise that sir what is agricultural population net cultivable area so what is to agricultural population so agricultural population include cultivators and agricultural laborers and their family members so agricultural population means who are the agricultural population cultivators agricultural laborers and their family members all are included in agricultural population and total population is very simple all the people in a particular country and net cultivated area means the area which is used for cultivation it is the net cultivated area and also the then the population growth population growth if you will see the data you can understand India's population growth are slowly decreasing in 2001 the population growth rate was population growth rate was 21.54 percent and 2011 the population growth rate 17.54 so if you will compare in be between the two time you can understand the population growth rate slowly decreasing population growth rate slowly decreasing and also in your book have on the basis of this growth rate there are four phase like demographic transition model like demographic transition model India's growth rate India's population growth are divided into the four phase phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 in demographic transition model you have got three stage but here four so then the first one is 1901 to 1921 the year and in that time first world war have done india was a colon colonial government that's why during that time birth rate and death rate both are high that's why population have not increases rapidly so in this year birth rate and death high after that the year 1921 to 1951 1921 to 1951 it is the second phase on that time due to the improvement due to the improvement of health and transport facility and medical facility that is why birth rate still high death rate decline then 1951 to 1981 during that time population exploitation occurred in India the third stage population exploitation occurred because 
on that time green revolution have done birth high death low what are the reason the main reason is different type of developmental activity have started lots of industrialization agricultural improvement have done and on the time people of number number of human resources are also increases that's why during that time population exploitation occurred and india also reach the second most populous country all over the world during that time is the most important or crucial 1951 to 1981 and now 1981 to till today this is the last stage and and that time birth rate are also birth rate slowly decline and death rate decline so during that time also birth rate and death rate both are declined but we can't understand this one we can understand from today so many years later the india's population growth rate are slowly decline so these are the important different phases of population growth all over the country then regional variation of population growth you have seen there some places population growth rate is very high some places population growth rate is very low and then another one this is the population composition the population composition i have told birth death and migration these are the three component of population and population composition have they are different age group they are male or female number of population they lived in rural or urban areas all these have in this chapter you will read it then india's population also uh, population composition also we have seen linguistic composition and religious composition we know that india is a diverse country lots of people are live who have used different type of languages so that's why due to that reason india have so many language as well as so many religion so religious composition and linguistic composition is also a important factor or important part of india's population and next one is the composition of working population working population means if you see the different age group next chapter also i will explain je what is the different age group so but today from that topic je working population composition of working population working population are generally working population are generally depends on 15 to 59 years age 15 to 59 years age so during due to that age group maximum people are two type generally those people are working more than 183 days it is called main worker 183 days more than 183 days and less than 183 days working days they are called marginal worker the difference between main worker and marginal worker it is also a very important question you will prepare this and the last portion of the chapter this is the different occupational structure india's people are generally indian pop population depend on agricultural base agricultural main means primary activity but apart from the primary activity so many people are engaged in secondary and tertiary activity that this is the composition of economic activity in our country so thank you student up to this you will read in india's book the first chapter and india's book first chapter and human geography in that book second chapter both chapter have similarity that's why i will explain together these two chapter you will read and i think you can understand thank you এক ঘন্টা ধরে কন্টিনিউ বকাটা খুব চাপে বুঝলেন তো আমরা ক্লাস নিয়ে আপনার চল্লিশ